So a couple weeks ago, we discussed the Canterbury, an ice hauler that played a crucial role in the early days of the Expanse and had a long-lasting impact on the system, but I figured today we could take a closer look at its dedicated shuttlecraft, the Knight. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoy this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. So many of us are familiar with the Canterbury, the massive ice hauler that was destroyed during the Scopuli incident, and ultimately had a long-lasting impact on the system, sparking revolutions all across the belt, but interestingly, its shuttlecraft, the Knight, actually had more screen time. It played a bigger role in the arc of the characters, and I think it's definitely worth discussing. So, I figured today we could take a much closer look at the Knight, a ship that's often overlooked, as many people tend to focus on its more historically significant mothership. But we can't discuss the Knight without at least touching a little bit on the Canterbury. The Canterbury was a large ice hauler, about a thousand meters long, and while the Canterbury itself was incapable of entering planet's atmospheres, it had a shuttlecraft on board for that purpose, as well as likely to serve as a lifeboat. Its shuttlecraft, the Knight, as such, would fill the role as a shuttle, ferrying people to and from the Canterbury and the surface of a planet or a station that didn't have appropriate docking features to dock a vessel as large as the Cant. The Knight itself is actually relatively small, being only 20 meters long and 10 meters wide. For propulsion, it has a trio of Fusion Torch Epstein drives. Now, these are not as powerful or as capable or as efficient as modern Epstein drives, but they can propel the ship a pretty good distance. A perfect example of the limited range of these engines is when we see the Canterbury attempting to rendezvous with the Scopuli. They have to get within a pretty close distance in, you know, celestial terms to actually deploy the Knight effectively. As for armament, it shouldn't be a surprise that the Knight is completely unarmed. It is a civilian vessel designed to serve as a support ship for a civilian ice hauler, so it wouldn't make sense to have an armed lifeboat, basically. And that's what the Knight actually really was likely intended to be, a lifeboat for the much larger Canterbury. If the Canterbury was ever significantly damaged, crew could evacuate to the Knight and deploy, heading off to somewhere else, or just deploying a distress beacon and waiting nearby. Now, we don't know much about the history of the Knight before the events of the Scopuli incident, although it was likely tied to the Canterbury for quite some time. We know that it wasn't in great shape and was referred to by some less than flattering names by the crew of the Canterbury as it was being deployed to investigate the Scopuli, but that brings us to the Scopuli incident. When the Canterbury discovered the distress signal from the Scopuli, the decision was made that the Knight would be dispatched to rendezvous with the stricken vessel and rescue any crew. Upon arriving, they discovered that the Scopuli was significant damaged and seemingly abandoned by their crew for no reason. It does look like the vessel was boarded, but also shut down instead of actually, you know, being destroyed to the point of non-function. As the crew of the Knight were on board the Scopuli and the Scopuli and the Knight were docked together, the Amun-Ra class stealth ship, the Anubis, revealed itself. While it was originally believed that the Anubis was lining up to fire a shot on the Knight, which was investigating the Scopuli, it actually fired a salvo of torpedoes against the distant Canterbury, which was doing a flyby while the Knight was uh, investigating the Scopuli. In a panic, the crew of the Knight fled back to their ship and disconnected from the Scopuli before attempting to flee the area. However, they were significantly damaged by the Canterbury's debris field. This left the Knight basically adrift and venting atmosphere. While well, the crew was eventually able to stop the leak and repair the ship's radio to allow them to call for help, they were left drifting with a ticking timer, with the oxygen on board still slowly running out. Luckily for those on board, however, the distress signal from the stricken knight was detected by a passing warship, the MCRN Doniger, lead ship in the Doniger class of battleships, and the knight was ultimately taken aboard the Doniger, where the first major irreparable damage to the knight was done when a large hole was cut into the side of the vessel for Martian marines to board. Why these marines chose not to enter through the airlock beats me, but still, that's the decision that was made. With this large hole cut in the side, the crew were removed from the Knight, and the Knight was placed within the Doniger's hangar, still significantly damaged. At this point, it was completely unspaceworthy. And during the events of the raid on the Doniger by a fleet of Amun-Ra-class stealth ships, while the Tachi was being used in an attempt to escape the vessel, a stream of PDCs ended up basically shredding the Knight into nothing more than ribbons of steel. Anything that remained of the night would have been completely vaporized in the destruction of the Doniger when it was scuttled. 
thus ending the story of the knight. Overall, the knight played a really significant role in the early seasons of the show and actually had a lasting effect on the system as well. It was from the knight that Holden made his famous transmission, blaming Mars for the destruction of the Scopuli, which ultimately led to most of the events of the TV show. And while the Knight was a very interesting ship on its own, it couldn't function without its larger mothership, the Canterbury, and if you'd like to learn more about the Cant, I'll leave a link up here to my video all on that. And I'd like you to let me know down in the comments whether you think the Knight is part of a larger class of smaller ships, maybe a mass-produced lifeboat kind of vessel, or do you think it's a one-of-a-kind ship that was maybe built by a company specifically to serve as the shuttle for the Canterbury. And if you have anything else you'd like to see me cover in The Expanse, leave it down below in the comments. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.